So a friend forwarded this video clip to me. It shows Ukrainian surface drones attacking a Russian ship in the Black Sea. The drones appear to be controlled by a remote operator using a video feed from an IR camera on the drone. And you can see the drone maneuvering and the effect of surface waves tossing, tossing the drone around and, and the operator is fighting the surface waves and trying to evade the ship's closing weapons and has to look through water splashed on a camera lens. Now, I fully support Ukraine and more power to Group 13. That said, the same thing must be happening in the Red Sea where the Houthis are using drones to attack commercial and military ships. So I thought, what would happen if the ship were equipped with a jammer that could shut down the video link? I mean, suppose the jammer could deny service from, the, from a range of, let's say, two and a half kilometers from the ship. So any drone that gets within this protection bubble, in quotation marks, becomes unguided in as much as the video feed drops out. Now, if the drone falls back on an AI target recognition, then the jammer will not solve that problem, but it'll solve other problems like shutting down a ready source of AI training videos for one. And by the way, it would be a protection bubble, similar to the parlance used in countermeasures against radio-controlled IEDs. In fact, there is no meaningful difference between those two problems. So here's a simulation of a TV-guided surface drone attacking a ship. It's an engaged simulation using a generic sea skimmer missile model. The seeker and autopilot represent the operator guidance, which I expect is a kind of adaptive, soft mix between proportional navigation and pursuit guidance. Basically, the drone is represented by a low-flying constant altitude missile whose guidance signal is at the video link frequency, which would be either 2.4 gigahertz or 5.8 gigahertz, give or take. So here's the ship. Here's the drone. The magenta circle shows a reference radius of two and a half kilometers, and this line is the instantaneous heading of the drone. The inset at the bottom represents the drone's view of the ship. It's meant to represent the video feed provided to the operator. And for visibility, the ship is a big tanker like you might find in the Red Sea. Now we can see from the Ukrainian video that the drone heading is affected by surface waves. I modeled this as a noise process that creates a band-limited heading error on which is superimposed the steering command, the, the guidance signal that's provided by the operator. Now as a rule of thumb, for a missile to intercept a target, it needs to fly at at least three times as fast as the target speed. So in this case, the ship's speed is a pokey 20 knots and the drone is clipping along at about 60 knots. And of course, this video runs faster than real time. The drone heading is swinging around because of the surface waves, but the operator is driving the drone toward the ship. And unsurprisingly, the drone hits the ship. Now let's rerun the same simulation, but this time the video feed is effectively switched off when the drone gets within two and a half kilometers of the ship by an onboard jam reactive drifum based digital RF memory based missile jammer, which can and will do that job. Everything else in the simulation is identical except the guidance signal is disconnected at two and a half kilometers. Uh, in this model, there are, is no other guidance signal after that such as might be provided uh, by an AI target recognition, for example, or an automatic recovery based on dead reckoning built from uh, the time history of known to be good guidance inputs may be triggered by the loss of an ID-coded pilot signal in the video link. That, I mean, that's the kind of thing I would do, but I, I don't know what they're doing. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking, how big does the protection bubble need to be around the ship to, to prevent uh, it getting hit by a drone? I mean, the bigger the protection bubble, the less likely a random direction drone is to hit the ship. So bigger is good. Bigger is better. This is an overlay of a couple of hundred simulation runs where the protection bubble radius is varied. And the bigger the protection bubble, the lower the probability of a successful drone attack. And what if the surface drones were accompanied by a, a high altitude repeater drone? And what about the propagation issues in this? And you know what? From an, from an ECM point of view, this problem is identical to jamming the World War II German HS-293 uh, guided missile, which was a, a command-to-line-of-sight air-launched anti-ship missile, the first one ever, actually. And the damn peculiar part of the problem is that the, as the missile gets closer to the ship, the guidance signal becomes weaker and the jamming signal becomes stronger. This is the opposite of a radar homing missile, where the skin echo and the jamming signal both increase as the missile gets closer to the ship, so they're competing with each other. Anyway, it's a rich and interestingly complex ECM problem. And you know what else? I bet it would take microscopic power from an onboard jammer to corrupt that video link. 
And that's all the video links at once, even if there are a dozen or more drones coming at the ship. Now, if that happens, more advanced or more expensive drones can be expected to switch over to some form of autonomous guidance, possibly using AI to wring out as much information as possible from whatever the drone can observe.